Yo, welcome back to another episode of The Q with Quincy Avery. That was Dirk, All My Life with uh, J. Cole. Uh, one of my favorite songs right now. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I hope that everybody's having an amazing Memorial Day. Um, a great holiday. We're going to be joined by special guest Jordan Love um, in just a minute. But before that, I wanted to get start, started with a little bit of football news. And then football news, I think, well, to me, one of the biggest things going on right now in the football world is is DeAndre Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins was a member of the Arizona Cardinals, as many of us know. He was recently released by this Arizona Cardinals team. Um, and I think a lot of people were a bit shocked by him being released. But uh, I think that it was a little bit difficult for them in terms of finding a trade partner. And the reason is DeAndre Hopkins is a tremendous talent. I think that we all know that. He is somebody who uh, is always open, and it's not like he's created a bunch of separation, right? He creates the ability to get open just because his arms are so long. He makes contested catches. He's a true safety blanket for quarterbacks across the league. I had the pleasure of when I was working with Deshaun Watson, um, DeAndre Hopkins is one of his receivers. And the thing about him was so interesting. It, it, you'd watch tape with Deshaun, and you'd be going over plays, and you're like, what was Hop supposed to do right there? And he'd be like, ah, uh, he had this route, but um, me and him just got like a, a sixth sense. He was feeling this. I was feeling this. So I knew I could throw the ball to D-Hop right here. He might not have been running the route that was originally called, but he ran the route that worked for those two. And it, it was highly successful. He was somebody able to who amassed a ton of yards, a ton of catches when he was playing along Deshaun. However, when he went and played alongside Kyler Murray, you saw a stark decline in a lot of his production. And I, I think that it's been pretty clear I think that they've talked about it a good bit. I'm not sure how much like everybody knows, but the relationship between DeAndre Hopkins um, and Kyler Murray seemed to be a relationship that was a bit frayed. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals have already made the decision that they're going to be all in on Kyler Murray, right? They've invested all of their chips in terms of giving him the big contract, doing all those things. Um, to make everybody aware that, that Kyler Murray was going to be their quarterback going forward. And DeAndre Hopkins and Kyler Murray were not on the same page. It just was not something that was was going to be able to work out. So they tried to trade him. The Chiefs and the Bills were two trade destinations that were definitely probable for DeAndre Hopkins. But after Odell Beckham's contract where he got $15 million, things kind of held up. DeAndre Hopkins might not have played a ton the last two years, but he's played more than Odell, and he felt like he was worth more than him. And I can understand why somebody would feel like that. DeAndre Hopkins is one of the best receivers whenever he steps on the field each and every time. But the Cardinals are also just pissed that he didn't play the last two games, right? He was – I'm not going to say he was healthy because he's been banged up for so often these last few years, but they felt he was healthy enough to play. And he decided to turn down that opportunity to hop on the field with his team. And I think that's something that's difficult um, for teams to get over. Sometimes it's a bit of a difficult situation. I can understand that. Why somebody would be like, ah, this is not the guy for me. Um, but if I was a team, I'd be all over him. So the teams that are still looking to sign him, and, and I'm going to talk about the contract. The contract I estimate is going to be somewhere between 13 and $16 million guaranteed. Um, they're going to give him a, a ton of that in signing bonus. That will allow teams to work around the cap. And then they'll do like a $1 million um, salary for the year. The teams that are going to be in it, the Buffalo Bills, they are still going to be in it. The Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs are somebody that I think it would be a little weird um, with DeAndre Hopkins on the team. And you guys are going to think that I'm crazy, but he plays a lot like – a lot like Travis Kelsey. Kelsey is someone who, like, isn't running away from people, isn't getting wide open. He's not doing any of those things. However, um, he's somebody who finds a way to get open, finds a way to get catches. Um, and I think it could be special. P people are speculating about DeAndre Hopkins and the Cleveland Browns. That's not something I see, and it's not something I've talked to Deshaun about. It's not something I've talked to anybody in the organization about. I think that it would be really, really difficult. I actually think that DeAndre Hopkins should go to the Green Bay Packers. Um, I'm not sure if they're necessarily built 
all the way to win, but they have a really good defense. I think Jordan Love is going to be fantastic this upcoming year, um, just in some of the spurts that we saw over the last few years. Um, being a true number one in that NFC North, um, one of those teams, one of the teams with, with guys I got, Jordan, uh, uh, Justin Fields in Chicago, or heading over to uh, Green Bay with Jordan Love. I think that'd be really fantastic. Something that'd be special and allow him to be really successful. But we got Jordan Love. He's going to be on here in just a moment with us. He'll be on here in a, a few minutes. I'm going to give you guys a quick song, give you guys a little bit more football news, um, and then we'll have Jordan Love on before the basketball game. So stick with us. Give you a little Kanye West, all the lights. And that was Kanye West, a little all of the lights. You're listening to The Q with Quincy Avery. We're going to be joined by a special guest. Jordan Love in just a minute here, but before he hops on, I want to talk about some quick quarterback news. I think that it's always important that we focus on quarterbacks because that is what I do, and that's what we focus on here on the queue. I want to talk a little about Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo was, of course, a quarterback who was on the San Francisco 49ers the past few years. He was really successful there. Um, I think that they made real efforts to make Trey Lance the quarterback. I think everybody's aware of that. Real efforts to make Trey Lance a quarterback this past season. Trey got hurt. Jimmy was a starter. He got hurt. Brock Purdy got back in. Um, it was it was kind of a shit show over there. Jimmy Garoppolo is somebody who's been hurt quite often over the last few years. I think that he's a really solid quarterback. I don't think that he's great, but he's definitely solid. He's someone who can do a lot of things really well. However, he's not always someone who gets along great with coaches. Um, him and Kyle Shanahan seem to have a little difference of opinion on how a quarterback should work. Leave that alone. Um, but when he got traded, I'm not sure that the the Las Vegas Raiders knew exactly what they're getting. Jimmy Garoppolo failed his physical when he got there, had to get surgery. So that really leaves this leaves this trade that they made with the San Francisco 49. I mean, the acquisition that they made um, to obtain Jimmy Garopp Garoppolo up in limbo, failing that that physical means that he can be cut at any given time um, before he starts his first game with the Las Vegas Raiders. So essentially, if he's not ready week one, week two, week three, there's really no real reason that they should have him on the roster, likely gets cut, doesn't get any of his $11.25 million signing bonus that he was originally signed for. So it's $22.5 million salary. Uh, it just goes really in a, a state of limbo. It's going to be really tough, difficult for him to get that money, get that bread. Um, so Jimmy Garoppolo could be in a situation where um, somebody who I think is one of the more talented quarterbacks in the NFL is without a home because the San Francisco 49ers at that point, they start the, the season, and it, it's going to be tough, right? They're in a really tough division, the AFC West. If he's not there to play, they're going to be in a situation where they're going to start tanking for one of the quarterbacks, Drake May, Caleb Williams, one of those guys. And they'll be in a really, really difficult situation. They don't find somebody to hop in, make it happen, um, and play. Um, and Anna Sosa, I'm going to play your song. Jordan Love is going to be on here in just a minute. I wanted to talk about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this anti, because that's what she said. I'm, I've never played this song before. Um, I was asked for it. It was a special request. Um, I hope she's still on here. Oh, let me let me see what she's what, what the song is called. What, what does she want to play? I'm gonna give her own. It's called own. Andy Sosa own. We're gonna give you guys the music. That's been. I, I hope it's good. If it's not good, it's good going off. Give you this last song before we get Jordan Love on here. Um, look forward to uh, cool interview. Nope, 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 nope. I gave the song a chance. Um, I wanted to hear it. I think that that's a great opportunity for us to start listening, some, learning some new music. Um, but uh, that that is not the song that I, I'm currently looking for at this moment. It's not that it's bad music. It's just not a song for me. So I'm going to give you one little Drake song. Jordan Love just texted me, said he's hopping on right now. So I'm going to give you some Drake. And when he gets done, we'll have Jordan Love joining us on the queue with Cozy Avery. All right. I think we got Jordan in the – oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Let me see how long it takes for – I'm going to invite him. We got Jordan Love in the building. Oh, he's probably going to get hung up trying to figure out how to unmute his mic. But this is Jordan Love 
Oh, we can well, you hear me? Quarterback for the Green Bay Packers now. What up, though? Q, what up, man? Man, cooling, trying to be cool like you. Hey, man, we all trying to get like you. <laughs> so today's show, I, I, I don't know if you've ever checked out an episode. It's super chill, super laid back. Uh, somebody might somebody might be recording it, so don't say nothing crazy, but he, we, we chilling. Uh, I so I'm just kind of ask you some questions about kind of how you got to where you were. It's a lot of, like, young football players who listen to this. Kind of tell us a little bit about your journey um, and get you out of here before this game seven. Yeah, bet, man. Uh, let me see. Where you want me to start? High school, little league, college? Now, we ain't going to go little league, but I seen you, you – well, I know you're a little bit under-recruited. I kind of want to, like, how does that happen? Some of these – as big, strong arm, as talented, as fast. Mm-hmm. How do you end up at Utah State? Yeah, man. So I would I would say I was just undersized still. Um, you know, you start getting recruited your sophomore junior year, and I was still, you know, six two, six three, but super skinny. Just, you know, I wasn't even really starting like that until the third game of my junior season on varsity. So um just not a lot of not a lot of tape. And then but I was doing all the little circus, like the summer camp, seven on seven, all that stuff. And um, just under recruited, especially coming out of Bakersfield, there wasn't a lot of a lot of motion coming out of there. So uh, I think the classes around me, we kind of picked it up in that area. But um, just had to kind of, you know, Utah State called. That was my biggest offer, and I just had to make the most of the opportunity I had right there, and uh, kind of ride that wave, and got me to where I am now. So it worked you out for sure. You ain't killed it at Utah State um, freshman year. You redshirted after that. You redshirted freshman year, right? Yeah, redshirted freshman year. And then uh, second year, I was a backup through the first three games. Uh, and then I took over, like, only coming in for a couple plays here and there, a couple series. And then I think the fifth game is when I became the starter my second year. And, and you played. were solid that year, you know what I'm saying? 55, yeah. 57% yeah. completion percentage. Junior, you go crazy. I remember mm-hmm. you going crazy because I'm always, like, on the lookout, seeing quarterbacks. I see him like, oh, shit. This dudes out here killing. Mm-hmm. When did you realize, like, oh shit, I'm probably going to the NFL? <laughs> Bro, really, really that year, like, I ain't gonna lie. I remember talking to somebody uh, my freshman year, and we was talking, you know, kind of what we gonna do after after this. And I remember telling them, I was like, "Bro, I'm, you know, coming here trying to let football get me a degree and, and figure out what I'm gonna do after that." And I wasn't even thinking about NFL. I was like, "Bro, I'm really just trying to make the most of the opportunity here." And then. I say once I got in the field and started playing and, and, and kind of saw how, you know, how well I was playing, especially that junior year, it was like, I, you know, it's, it's no doubt I got to keep going and, and keep getting better because the, the door is going to open up for sure. So, yeah, and them motherfuckers opened up. You go in the first round to Green Bay. What is that like? Because you, you go to the Green Bay, you know, Aaron Rodgers is there, mm-hmm. you know, you're not going to be the starter. How do you, how do you kind of handle that? Because that's different than, most other folks who get drafted as a first-round quarterback. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. It was tough. It was one of those things, like, you know, you get that call, it's like, oh, okay. You never know where you're going to go. You get a call Green Bay, you're like, oh, yeah, all right, well, I already know what that situation's like. <laughs> you know you're going to be a backup. Like, it ain't no <laughs> – you know you're going to be a backup. And it's like, all right, well, this is a situation I'm put in. I just got to make the most of it, bro. I got to go in there and learn, get better, like, I know it ain't going to be like, I'm going to try and, I'm going to go out there and compete. Like, that's what I do. We all going to go out there and compete. But it's one of those things, you know, like, yeah, you know. It ain't you, no competing. Like, you can compete you know, as much as you, know you want. You know, <laughs> Look, you're not starting. You feel me? You know who that is. So it's like, all right, we're going to come in here and just do my thing, and it's going to figure itself out, man. Yeah, but you went probably at the most fucked up time out of any quarterback ever. You go COVID year, no mm-hmm. preseason, no real, like, Rookie mini, you missed all that little shit, mm-hmm. and I feel like it kind of set all the quarterbacks that year behind. Like you didn't get that opportunity to just start gelling with the teammates, get out there, learn the system. Because that system, y'all were in, it's super West Coast at that time, right? Mm-hmm. No, it is super West Coast, and and that's the thing we didn't get like how everybody practicing right now OTAs. We didn't get any of that, so we're just doing Zoom meetings, trying to put in all these installs. Like you're not getting no reps at it; you just watch a straight film. So. We came in, my first practices were training camp. So you got you mm-hmm. you ain't getting none of that off season grind to work. So your first reps are training camp. And you only getting like you you, you getting like three, four reps uh 
a, a team period. It's not like you're getting a lot of reps. So that was probably the hardest part for sure because you come in, your, your head's spinning, everybody's swimming, and you just don't have the reps to back it up. It's your first time doing it. So it, it's tough. I think people think when you like a, a rookie quarterback or third straight, like, because you come as a third straight, that's just what can happen after you get drafted. Mm-hmm. They don't understand the limited amount of reps you get in practice. It's not high school. You don't have an offense. De- like, we here together, and the starter's taking eight of the 12 reps. The mm-hmm. backup might take two. You might get two. If you're lucky, and sometimes if you got a, a, a backup who really got to get ready, then you might get one or none. So it puts you in a fucked up position. You don't play that rookie year. But the, the time you got in your second year, you become the backup there. I think it was Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Um, and it looked like you had to throw the ball down the field probably a lot. They, they played a defense that was so different than what they would have played against Aaron Rodgers. Like, how do you start preparing for that? Because you don't really know what they're going to play. Yeah, exactly. That's it's one of those things. Like you going in that week, we're like, all right, you know, we like we know the Chiefs like to all out. We know that's their, their kind of mo on defense, and um, especially being a young quarterback, you know, defense is going to try you. They they're going to see what you know, see if you can protect yourself and get the ball out. And if if you ain't making those plays, they're going to keep doing that. They're going to keep doing what's working. So going in that game, we kind of knew that was going to happen, and um, we talk about it all the time with the coach that we we have a great plan just because you know I found out I was starting that week. Like that's mm-hmm. when. Well, Aaron got COVID. It was during the COVID. So um, I found out that week. So it's it's tight. You're trying to put a game plan together that's perfect. And um, at the same time, like we talk about reps, bro, in practice, you know, I've done all-out procedures where you you, you see it's all-out. You got to check to your protections, all that, probably about four or five times to this point. So it's not like something I'm just, you know, super comfortable doing. So, um, you know, we got out there. We had our plan. And it was pretty much just throwing go balls just trying to complete those. And that's, you know, as you know, that's a low percentage. That's a, that's a tough, tough hole to hold right there. Yeah. Put yeah. you in that position, young quarterback, first you know, early time out there is, is difficult. It's difficult. So we went out there, man, and it was definitely, looking back on it, it, it was a big learning experience for me. I got to see, you know, what it's like my first game in the NFL, see exactly what defense is going to be throwing at you. And that was my first test to be like, all right, hey, this is on you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not nobody else. You got to get yourself ready, know exactly what you need to be doing, and have those answers when you get on the field because it's on you at the end of the day. Yeah, you played a little bit after that. You played Detroit. But then the next year, AR gets hurt against Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And you balled out, in my opinion. Like, I watched the tape. I'm like, that's really impressive. Like, I would Mm -hmm. be very excited if I'm a member of the Green Bay Packers fan. You go out there and do that. Like, did that give you a level of confidence you didn't have before, like, after that game? Um, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I say the whole year I had that confidence. Like, if you would be able to see what I was doing in practice, like I just been from from year one to you know year three last year, like just the level of confidence I was playing with, knowing what to do with the ball, uh, making throws consistently, and just making plays, bro. Like I, I was doing that all year in practice on scout team, whatever rep I was getting, I was doing that. So it, like it wasn't a surprise to me when I got got out there and was able to do it. You know, obviously. The situation of the game was a situation, but, you know, we made the most of it. My mind, I was like, bro, we, we better come back right now. We better go win this game. Like, I ain't trying to hear none of the others talk. We better go win. Like, fuck it. So, uh, but like I said, bro, I was doing that all year in practice, so it wasn't a surprise to me. I'm going to tell you this. I wasn't surprised at all either because I remember talking to David. David is Jordan's agent. We are talking to Jordan Love, Green Bay Packers, starting quarterback. But I talked to him before the game, like, I, he, out there at Pros Week, I was I, – I looked at you like, oh, he has one of the best arms that I've seen, like, throwing the football. So when you do that against the Philadelphia Eagles, uh, I think that I had a, a bigger expectation, like, this offseason wasn't going to go the way that it went um, in terms of, of them really, like, handing you over the reins. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is that level of – like, when you know the team now sees you as a starting quarterback, like, how does that change your offseason this year from the things you were doing previously? Oh, man, it, I just say personally, it feel a lot better. Like, you know, you got that confidence of the whole team, the whole organization, everybody behind you. It just feel better knowing you the guy, knowing everybody's, you know, knowing that you can go out there and make those plays and got that confidence in you. But uh, it don't change the offseason, bro. You know, we, we get that work in. You see, we get together during that week, and um, we're going to put that work in in the offseason and, and just grind. But 
like I was telling some of the dudes, it helps being a guy because now everybody kind of want to come through with you, come be in the offseason and, and, and train with you um, as opposed to, you know, being a backup. Everybody's still trying to go work with A-Rod and things like that. So um, that that aspect's easier, but but the work's still going to get pit, put in. I think it gives me a little bit more of a drive to, you know, the urgency, like, yo, we got to go make this happen now as opposed to, you know, all right, I'm, I got to go make it happen in practice, see what happens at the games. Like, nah, it's, it's go time now, so. Yes, it's all on you. How does it change really all season with it before they're building a plane around somebody else and you got to like wear their shoe? When you go in the game, they they measure this shoe out for somebody else. It's theirs. You got to put your foot in it. Now it's like it's your shit. Like they custom tailored this offense for you. Um, do you see a large difference in just kind of how the off season shapes up with the plan being for you? Like them asking you questions about what you like versus them yeah. asking somebody else? For sure. I mean, this since we've been talking about it, like I've been back up here meeting with Matt and uh, we've just been putting a plan together. He's been asking me every day, like, you know, what plays you like, what plays you don't like. We're putting installs together and, you know, I'm able to rank every play from plays I love, plays I'm OK on and plays I don't really like. So we can put exactly what plays I like in, take out the plays I don't like, as opposed to, you know, like you said before, it's. He's doing that with Aaron. Now I'm just, you know, Aaron's also not there in the offseason. So I'm actually the one running the plays that he's talking to Aaron about what he likes, what he doesn't like. And then at the same time as a backup, it's hard because, you know, every little thing that a receiver does, when you want to go tell him, like, hey, nah, this is how you need to run this. this what, you kind of got to look over your shoulder and be like, hey, uh, is it cool if I tell him to go run this like that? Like, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it, that's the best part is not having to do that. You ain't got to worry about none of that. It's it's your show. Go it's run no it. Shit. You feel me? You feel me? So that's. That's for me. That's the best part right now. Yeah, well, I ain't going to hold you. I got two quick questions. Yeah. Um, and I ask everybody these. When did you know you were special? Like, I think that, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people play football for a long time. They may never have that realization. Mm-hmm. Uh, that something had to hit, click with you at one point or another. Like, oh, I'm, I'm different than every other kid. And, and what kind of sparked that moment for you? Yeah, man. I, the crazy part about this is – like, if you would have asked me in high school, I would have never thought I was playing football, bro. But I always had coaches, especially my high school coach. Like, even when I was a freshman, bro, he was always telling me, like, you're going to be special. Like, you're going to be good. You got talent. Like, I was small, too. He's like, nah, you're going to grow. You're going to get bigger. Like, he's like, you're going to be good. And I never really believed it until, like I said, until really I got to college and started balling out out there on the field. And Because, I mean, I finally kind of grew into my body. My throwing motion got a little bit better. It wasn't as, you know kind of weird. I, I just toned up all the mechanics and started really seeing myself put it all together. And I was like, all right, bro, like, you know, I got something here that I could work with for sure. I ain't going to be out here hooping. That's for sure. <laughs> Can you get a bucket? Can you I, hoop? But I ain't going to be out here hooping. That's not what it's going to take me. <laughs> you no, know, I can hoop, bro. We can, we can go hoop. <laughs> We're going to hoop in Austin. We're going to get a couple shots, it's good. man. Uh, it's good. <laughs> uh, last thing I got, what you got playing for the, the rest of the offseason? What are you doing before you get back out on the field? Um, man, so we have no TAs right now. We got a couple more weeks of this. I'll be here. And then after this, man, I'm gonna go back to Cali and go, uh, tune back up again, get back in the lab, go work out, throw, uh, go see the family and just kind of get that last little break in before we get back to it. But it's going to be pretty much the same thing. I'm, I'm going to try and keep this momentum going from OTA, stay in the book, stay, uh, stay in everything kind of, obviously, you know, we got a lot of young receivers. So the more we can get together and, kind of get some throwing reps together this offseason, get that chemistry down. It's going to be better for all of us. So just keeping that momentum going. So I like your plan. I appreciate you hopping on. Hey, the moment I knew you were special, though, I think you was playing against, damn, was it Fresno State? Mm-hmm. I don't know, some blue and red team. They were wearing white. You played them at home. You threw a fade down the right side. I'm like, oh, okay, he got it. And he, like, ran a touchdown. You know what game I'm talking about? Yeah, we were playing uh, Stony Brook, bro. That was the first game of my uh, last year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm like, okay, he definitely got it. Nah, mm-hmm. but I appreciate you hopping on. I know there's so many other things you could have been doing. Uh, what what song are you listening to right now that I can play for the people? Ooh, what kind of vibe you want? Man, you you give us whatever. I got you, I got you. Uh, let me see here. Bro, you need to play uh, 3 a.m. in Oakland. 3 a.m. in Oakland? In Oakland by Kari. Got it. Go Good little vibe right there. All right, say less. I appreciate you hopping on. Enjoy the game. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Uh, next couple weeks, two weeks, something yeah, like that. Yes, sir. I'll see you, my boy. Stay yes, up. Sir, I appreciate you. You too. Yep.
That was Joy Love of the Green Bay Packers. Gonna give you a little 3 a.m. by Kari. That was that was a surprisingly good song selection by Joy Love. And I should have expected nothing less. Not only was he a great guest, but he has a good taste in music. And I think that is something to be appreciated. Listen to the Q with Quincy Avery. We just had Joy Love on. Um Ooh, Bryce Young versus Jordan Love in December. That is a game that I look forward to watching, look forward to seeing. But I do want to talk a little bit about Jordan Love. Um, after he was just on, I do appreciate him coming on. Jordan Love is somebody who I think is a testament to a lot of the things that I like to talk about in terms of who people are, type of quarterbacks they are, and their ability to remain steadfast and doing the things that they're supposed to do when they're not necessarily getting the opportunity to show themselves doing it. And what I mean by that is, is we get the opportunity many of times to see the starting quarterback go out there and do their thing. And you, you miss the moments of practice where they're doing all the things that prepare them for that moment. But you know that they did it because you get to see those results in the game. But someone like Jordan didn't, hasn't necessarily got those opportunities for the last few years, the last three years exactly. Like he's gone out there and he's practiced and practiced and practiced and just doesn't get the opportunities in games. And then finally when he does this past year versus the Philadelphia Eagles, you realize all that work that he must have put in that allowed him to go out there during that game to be as successful as he needed to be for his organization to have that level of faith in him to ride with him as their starter. This is an organization who hasn't gone through a bunch of quarterbacks. It's been Brett Favre, Aaron Rodgers, and now it's going to be Jordan Love. They've done a really good job in terms of selecting guys who could lead their franchise for a long time. And I think that they've made no mistake with Jordan Love. He's going to be somebody who's very, very successful. And it's because he was willing to put in the work when nobody was watching. That work with, when nobody is watching, that is what separates you. Because there's a lot of guys who rest on the things that got them there and say, hey, I'll figure it out when I get my opportunity. Like, I'll be all right. Like, I'll figure it out. I'm talented enough. There's very few people who are talented enough to talent um, their way through lives. You got to be able to do the right things over and over. When people are watching, when no one's watching, that's what's going to allow you to be successful. Um, and, I, and and that's what I'm glad that Jordan Love has done. It's so fun to watch someone like that mature, be successful, go out there and kill it on the field. And I know that he's just getting started and the best is yet to come for that young man. So, that is my piece on Jordan Love. I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I see in the chat and play a little music before we get games. Uh, somebody asked earlier, how are Dobbs and Watson picking up from last year? Dobbs and Watson, two quarterbacks that I trained, Cleveland Browns, two guys who are very, very talented. Deshaun Watson, obviously the staple there uh, with that organization. He is the franchise quarterback. And I was really nervous because I know – that Josh Dobbs had a number of different offers um, this offseason to go different places. Talked to Deshaun a lot about it. I think Deshaun tapped Josh on the show a little bit about it in terms of coming back to Cleveland. I mean, those are some of the cool things about working in a tight-knit quarterback community, right? I've worked with so many of these guys for so long that they become friends. Um, I know that I introduced Josh Dobbs and Deshaun when they were juniors in high school or Josh was a junior, Deshaun was a sophomore in high school. Um, and we spent many a days on the field together working, uh, whether they were working in college so they could be started for a team. Now they're working together in the NFL. They work together in off-season workouts. And they work together in practice. Um, but he got him to come there. And I think that that team is only going to be able to do more in terms of the quarterback position, right? They're only going to be able to add more information add more verbiage, verbiage, add more terminology, add more things to their playbook that they weren't able to add before because now you got a quarterback, Deshaun, who this offense is built around because he's going to be there for a full season. Deshaun is someone who has a similar play style, moves very well, can push the ball down the field. So you got two guys who do things a lot more similar than the things that they had last year with Jacoby, who I love. Jacoby is probably one of the best guys in the NFL as a people and a really talented quarterback. He did a lot of great things for him. But Josh Dobbs, Deshaun Watson, I think they're going to do a tremendous job for the Cleveland Browns this year. I know they drafted a young one, um, so we'll see. 
Um, but that is really all I got tonight. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of music, some music that I'm listening to. I'll probably play two or three songs. You guys know how I get down. If people stay and listen, we'll do it together. And if people get off, then I'll, I'll get off. But you listen to Q and Quincy Avery. I appreciate you guys so much. Got Geno Smith coming on the show soon. Got Jalen Hurts coming on the show soon. Just been all over the place in terms of scheduling and OTAs, but we're going to figure that out. Going to make sure we get them on really, really soon. Um, give you a little bit of music um, as we vibe out. I'm giving you Sauce Walker, Ghetto Gospel, one of my favorite songs right now. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I know, I think I'm going to try and get two episodes this week. Jalen Hurts and Gino, see if I can get those scheduled, or when we can get those scheduled. Um, but they'll be coming soon. So thank you guys again for joining me. Um, look forward to hearing, seeing from y'all soon. And uh, if there's anybody I'm not following on any of the socials, let me know. I'll make sure I get that follow in. Have a good night. Enjoy the game. Be blessed and happy Memorial.